Hey, welcome to Ruining History. Today, we're talking popes. Bad, bad popes. Not a lot of context to go off of there. I mean, you didn't really give me a lot to be excited about. Bad popes, I said. Bad that could be a lot popes. of things. You guys are excited, though. I'm, I'm into it. I'm, I'm ready to okay. ruin Well, they're fine over here, so. What's the difference between being Catholic and Roman Catholic? You're in Rome. Don't know if that's it. <laughs> If you're in Rome and you're a Catholic, when you're a Roman you're Catholic. Rome. Yeah. <laughs> we gonna talk about demons? Uh, they might make an appearance. I don't like demons. You don't? I, I, no, I like talking about demons. I just don't want to like. This guy's got some. What? Inner demons. Then we all have inner demons. There are so many popes. Hundreds of them. Big popes, little popes. Look, there's five popes. No idea who they are. Five more. See? Too many popes. So it's only natural that there's gonna be some stinkers in the bunch. With that in mind, let's take a look at three putrid popes. Rotten to the core, these popes are no good. Let's begin our journey with the story of a little pope who just couldn't quit being pope no matter how hard he tried, Benedict the Ninth. It's rumored that Benedict was only 10 to 12 years old upon becoming Pope. Some argue he was closer to his late 20s. Not sure how a detail like that becomes so muddled in the history books, but let's just imagine him as a rambunctious teen for the fun of it. Aww, littlest so, Pope. There it so is. There you go. There's a young Pope right there. Yeah, well, did they vote on that? Have we established that Pope is not established by lineage? No, it's not. So then how did, why a little boy then? Nepotism. He probably did really good in his first communion classes where they were like, bump him up, and then he just made it. <laughs> this one's going to the top. <laughs> Benedict's uncle was actually Pope John the 19th, and when Jack kicked the bucket in 1032, Benedict's father bribed the electing committee to put his son in the hot seat. So there's some nepotism. Does that mean there was someone else running out there who was like meant to be Pope? Do you know who what I mean? Screwed over. Who got screwed Who was like, I've been talking to God this whole time. Sort of like a sports upset. Like the Patriots and their ball? Yeah, like yeah. the Patriots and their ball. No, yeah. that's a deflate gate. It's not. It's sort of like a deflate yeah, gate it's situation. Sort of deflate gate. It's a deflate yeah. gate uh, situation. Uh, okay. Things got off to a rocky start for him. In 1033, about a year into his papacy, an opposing faction entered St. Peter's Basilica with the intent to murder themselves a pope. But it seems they suspected that if they entered with swords, someone might say, hey, what are you doing? So they decided to murder that pope with rope. Yeah, swords rope would be hard rope. to get through the metal detectors. Yeah, just a, a strange way to kill a man. It's pretty common. Yeah, I've seen it many times. Turn around. But to a like to just assassinate easily. someone? Yes. Like a, a You're pope? acting like he assassinated him with a string of hot dogs. It's a fucking rope. When the time came to execute their plan, things were thrown into disarray by a solar eclipse. And maybe they didn't know much about astronomy because it rattled them so much that they gave up entirely. They probably thought that it was like God's wrath. Yeah, I, I guess that's fair. I mean, w sure, we're all pretty intelligent now, but if you're about to kill someone who allegedly has a direct line to he has a telephone man, to God, yeah. and the sun suddenly turns black. I'd be terrified. Maybe. That's real. I've canceled plans because it rains. <laughs> <laughs> Whether or not they believed Benedict had command over the sky is debatable, but the Roman people sure had their suspicions. <laughs> Rumors amongst the populace were that Benedict kept magic books in his home, spoke with demons at night, and used his dark powers to seduce women. Ooh. Wait, but were popes allowed to marry and like fuck back then? No, or were they, still... <laughs> no, they weren't. No. Were they allowed to marry you should, and? You should Google <laughs> that. They had to marry. Google <laughs> can popes fuck. Over the years, his scandalous personal life and declining public image eventually caught up with him. And in September of 1044, growing resentment forced him to flee the city. A few months later, in the power vacuum created by his absence, another powerful family installed their local bishop as Pope Sylvester III in January of 1045. Benedict didn't seem cool with this because he showed up two months later and excommunicated Sylvester III. So Ben's Pope again now. Double Pope. Bye -bye. And then two months later, he was no longer Pope. He came back? He just walked back into town, told the current Pope, get out of here. I like to imagine this is the 13, 12 year old marching back in there. Just kicking down the kicking door, down riding in on his skateboard. He should have called himself Pope Tweety Bird. That's cute. What? To Pope? His Pope Sylvester. Oh boy. <sighs> He handed the papacy to his godfather, who became Pope Gregory VI after giving Benedict, uh, a lot of money. Some think Benedict stepped away from the papacy because his unpopularity with the Roman people was getting to him. Others have speculated he wanted to get married, a thing popes can't do. Can you, uh, masturbate? Cause I'll say this, I, I was actually a, a monk. Is yeah. this real? This yeah. is a real story. It was, it was like two weeks, out, but, but oh, okay. two weeks oh. as a monk. But when you're there, you can stroke it, but Nothing, nothing. You can't, you can't, fin you can't finish. You can't, you know, because you don't want to ruin the shit. Wait, sheets. hold on. 
So you just were walking around with blue balls the whole day? For two weeks, essentially, yes. That seems worse than actually stopping altogether, cold turkey. Yeah. Hey, I was 17, the hormones are raging, you know. That's you, the worst. You, that's so you're gonna <laughs> then blue ball yourself? <laughs> I, I was sadistic. <laughs> Benedict retreated to his family property near Tuscaloon. Wow, scenic. Not sure what he did here. Maybe whittled or something? Thought about how much he missed his big hat? I don't know. During his getaway, other popes came and went. Gregory, for instance, was officially deposed by Emperor Henry III. Clement II was appointed, then died suddenly eight months later. Popes are just flying through here. That's crazy. Nowadays, they seem to last for quite a while, but yeah. Yeah. except for that guy <laughs> before the current pope who was like, I'm done. He left? Yeah, he retired. He didn't even die. He just, he quit. He's alive. He's capable of doing the job. He just decided not to. Yeah. He probably saw a picture of Boca Raton and was like, <laughs> What the fuck am I doing? I gotta get to Boca! And maybe Benedict did miss that big hat because in November of 1047, he returned to Rome and made himself Pope again. Triple Popehood. Not sure how you just insist you're the Pope, but uh, this guy did it. Some say through bribery. Less than a year later, Henry III had him ejected from the throne. Benedict went back to his home in Tusculum, where he continued to declare himself the rightful Pope. He died about a decade later. This is senile. Well, I'm gonna be a Pope over there, <laughs> yeah. but I'm still the Pope. <laughs> I love Good that it's him. like, ugh, that's just Grandpa's always saying he's the Pope. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He ain't the Pope. Like his kid, yeah, his kids yeah. didn't believe him. Sure you were. Sure Three you times, <laughs> uh-huh. Benedict's legacy largely, was that he was the first man in history to sell the papacy. Which maybe doesn't sound all that dramatic, but when it comes to the Pope, that is some juicy behavior. Look at the reputation it gave him. St. Peter Damien called him a, quote, demon from hell in the disguise of a priest. And Pope Victor III called Benedict's papacy, quote, so vile, so foul, so execrable, that he shudders to think of it. But why are they coming so hard for him? He, yeah. like, didn't kill anyone. I've heard of worse priests in America. That does sound a little tad dramatic. He probably knew, like, if he said that, it was gonna go viral. He was probably <laughs> like, if I call the Pope a demon, everyone's gonna talk about it. I'll get certified. Put your, lip, put, <laughs> put your chapstick away. So now that we know that about the Pope, we're gonna bring him out right now, uh, Pope Benedict the Ninth. Just like I pictured him, yes. How's it going, how's it going? Hey, You're the Catholic, right? Yes. Great, mm. that's great. Uh, anybody have any questions for... Uh... What were you thinking when you sold your uncle your popehood? Things were kind of tough, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You find yourself in a situation, young with money, you figure it out. You take the lessons, you take the lumps, and then you come back stronger than ever. Stronger than ever. Yeah, it's so well, relatable. Two, three so times, cool. three times, baby, three p. So you you stepped away from the papacy a few times, but you always came back. Right. What's the logic there? I don't understand it. Well, that's a good point. No one ever asked me that. I think <laughs> uh, the grass is always greener, right? Uh, yeah. Especially for a where 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 did I where did I go and live at when I died to <laughs> Tuscany to Tusculum? Tusculum. Tusculum. Sweet Tonato. <laughs> it's fantastic. You you did go to some castles too. What did you think of those? Great castles. You, your, didn't, you didn't do that. I, I just made that up. I, he didn't talk about here, but you don't think the Pope's been to a couple castles? What's wrong with you? Come you're, on, dude. You're trying to yeah, entrap right. the Pope here? I just did. You didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, let's rate this nasty Pope now. A scale of zero to ten. Ten being, this is one no good nasty Pope. Zero yeah. being, not a bad guy. All right, let's go down the line. You give him a three. I give you a three. I think you're pretty cool. You could improve a little bit on the presentation, okay. essentially, but I'm cool with everything you did. Well, thank you. I also gave a three. Oh. I mean, you know, I feel like you're just a troubled youth. You know, you were rambunctious. You went around, you did some naughty things, but you know, we've all been there. Not bad. You guys are great. Yeah, I gave him a, gave him a four. You also have a dog saying it's cold and taking a poop. Yeah, uh, I think you give any young person a lot of power. He's gonna do some things that are unsavory, and I, you know what? I don't blame him. I don't think he was that bad. Sarah? Six. Oh yeah, I don't think you were that bad. No, you're a little less forgiving than the rest of these people. I think that because he sold the seat, that is a bad thing to do if you're Pope. So, any, any response you know, to that? You know, you're, you're, when you're right, you're right. You know? <laughs> 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 All right. Well, Pope Benedict the Ninth, thanks for uh, visiting us. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Yay! Sorry. Yeah, we got, we got more Popes to talk about. Oh, you're about, taking so. your chair with you. All right. That's his. <laughs> Our grand tour of naughty popes continues with Pope Alexander VI, who served from 1492 until 1503. Alexander was a member of the powerful Borgia family. Hello. 
and would become known for his corruption, and whether or not he was truly morally bankrupt. His whole life seems to be shrouded in salacious rumors, and let the record show that he is absolutely featured on a Wikipedia entry titled List of Sexually Active Popes. Ugh, yuck. So he actually is a pilf. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he's pilfing all right. Before we get into the juice, let's give him some Pope points for his accomplishments. He was known for being a staunch patron of the arts, even hiring Michelangelo to draw plans for the rebuilding of St. Peter's Basilica. That's a get. So, big art guy. Now, let's drag this Pope. First things first, Alexander walked into the papacy with a pretty bad rap sheet from his time as a cardinal. He lined his pockets by committing simony, aka straight up selling church offices. That's bad. Bad, bad, bad. His time as a cardinal was also marked by some pretty freaky eyes wide shut stuff. Author William Manchester notes that Pope Pius II once attended one of the cardinal's parties and noticed that, quote, none of the allurements of love was lacking and that despite all the beautiful women of Siena being in attendance, none of their male counterparts were there. Pope Pius suspected that this was done, quote, in order that lust be unrestrained. I'm already giving him a zero. I like him. <laughs> you like this guy? Yeah. You're into it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's a party pope. Yeah, I'm into that. I think this is when he was a cardinal, right? This is when he was a cardinal. Ah, I see. Oh, see, he's not even a pope yet. Not even a pope yet. Live your life. Alexander's lust would remain unrestrained well beyond his years as cardinal. And while some of his seedier actions are still subject to speculation, the fact that he fathered four illegitimate children with a married Roman noblewoman is pretty cut and dry. Manchester says that Alexander's, quote, enjoyment of the flesh was enhanced when the woman beneath him was married, particularly if he had presided at her wedding. Breaking any commandment excited him, but he was partial to the seventh. Ooh, that is one sick pope. I bet all the other people, you know, like they, you know, I guess vote or choose who's going to be pope. They probably wanted to go to the parties and they were like, if we get this guy in as pope. Oh, shit. He already throws good enough exactly. parties as, as, a, as a poor cardinal. You give him a palace? He's going to make it into a porno palace. Yeah, give him the resources and we'll have fun. Yeah. Great. Well... Alexander's celebration of flesh was on full display at the Papal Palace. Uh -huh. According to Manchester, guests at Papal parties were said to have been greeted by living statues, glittering men and women frozen in X-rated poses. Porno Ooh. Palace, there it is. Oh, like Hollywood Boulevard. Yep. There's the Porno Palace. The guys knew what they were buying. And maybe most salacious of all is the Banquet of the Chestnuts, which is... Uh, bear with me here. This was documented by Johannes Burchard, who was admittedly not a fan of the Borgia family. Some historians and even his contemporaries have dismissed this as outright slander, but Burchard claims to have witnessed this. So here we go. The banquet was allegedly arranged by the Pope's illegitimate son, Cesare, who he had named Cardinal because, uh, nepotism. Burchard says that among the guests, both Pope Alexander and his illegitimate daughter were also in attendance. After a dinner, guests enjoyed the company of 50 courtesans who danced their clothes away. As for the rest, I'll let Burchard do the talking. After the dinner, the candelabra with the burning candles were taken from the tables and placed on the floor, and chestnuts were strewn around, which the naked courtesans picked up, creeping on hands and knees between the chandeliers, while the Pope, Cesare, and his sister Lucretia looked on. This is when, according to Manchester, the serious sex started. As guests began to pair off with their courtesans, quote, servants kept score of each man's orgasms, for the Pope greatly admired virility and measured a man's machismo by his ejaculative capacity. After everyone was exhausted, His Holiness distributed prizes, cloaks, boots, caps, and fine silken tunics. Oh, I would love a silk tunic. <laughs> well, so, I hope you can ejaculate a lot, because yeah, that's, that's uh, the only way you would get one. Is it how much you ejaculated or how, how far it went? I think it's how many orgasms, orgasms you, you had. Have. After a while, nuts. you're going to be blowing out smoke. I hate this video so much. Alexander's life remained thoroughly saucy, even into his twilight years. He would go on to pick up another married noblewoman and was believed to have fathered, in total, seven to nine children. That's a lot. Author Mandel Creighton writes that even at the age of 62, quote, Alexander still possessed the power of drawing women to him as a magnet draws iron. Alexander's papacy ended with his death in 1503. He was 72 years old, and his death was likely caused by malaria or the plague, though some hold the belief that he was poisoned. And considering his habit of sleeping with married women, it doesn't seem unreasonable. Once again, we are blessed with the appearance of a what? historical reenactor oh uh, in the role of Pope Alexander VI. Let's bring him out. Hey, 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 <laughs> he walks in with a folding hey, chair. Hey, hey, hey. 
going, guys? Nice mane. <clears throat> Thank you. That's very Steven Tyler-esque. You look like you just came from a chestnut party. They're so good, aren't they? <laughs> I th we don't know. Yeah, I think they're good. You guys should just have them. So, no, you know, normally popes don't have any sex. Uh -huh. Why did you choose to do the opposite of that? You had the most sex. Yeah. Well, I wanted to have sex. That was, that was, <laughs> that was the starting point. So the Pope has a direct line to God. What did he think about all these uh, this, uh, bump and uglies? My interpretation of the conversation I had with God was, uh, let's just say we... We hashed he, it out. Yeah, he has his way of looking at it. There's a way we both look at it. There is a gray area, and then there is certainly my way of doing things. So and you're saying the Bible is like a pirate's code, guidelines. Not. Yeah, actually, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and say that. Some parts of it, yeah, don't kill anybody. That's that's real. Take that at face value. That's, <laughs> that's what I've been saying. Yeah. Like, fuck around if you want, just don't murder people. Why don't we rate this Pope on our nasty scale? Uh, once again, zero being, hey, this guy's all right, 10 being, this is one nasty Pope. Sarah, what do you got? Eight. That's one nasty pope. That is one nasty pope. It, some of it sounds a little rough. I get it. I mean, nasty. There's worse popes than me. But I did also there. give you, like, the sexiest looking number. Ooh, curvy. Let me get a better shot. <laughs> peek at that number. Yeah. Oh, God. Don't, give, don't show oh, it to him. Oh, don't, no. don't show it to him. <laughs> All right. Ryan, what do you got? <laughs> uh, gave him a seven. I now kind of want to change it to an eight. Seven's kind of a sexy number, too. Seven. Don't look at oh, my I'm number. Yeah, Jesus yeah. Christ. Reminds me of how many kids I have. Ooh, ah. You know, I'm changing it retroactively. We're going eight. <laughs> I'm changing it to an eight. <laughs> Just it's an because eight. of that. <laughs> it's an eight now. All right. Now I'm turning on. Uh, <laughs> mine is, uh, I, I gave you, uh, it's a six that I pivoted from a five. I did remember the the whole thing with, like, the married women. I mean, I mean that's, that's kind of not really cool. Right. Yeah, that no. wasn't cool. No, that was, wasn't that was cool. cool. I give you six. Okay. <laughs> You're getting close to the line, but I'm still cool with it. Well, there's right. symmetry on both sides I like here. you guys. You guys are all right. Yeah, Pope Alexander, love. thank hey. you for thank you. raising us with your pleasant. Thank you. Thanks, Pope. Look, I understand that this, you know, these popes <laughs> aren't, um, they're not Jeffrey Dahmer. But uh, you have to look at this with... Uh, your history glasses. Your history glasses. Everybody put them on. See that? Things are different now. This is one bad pope. And finally, the story of a pope on trial. But with a very strange twist. It begins with Formosus, who became pope in the year 891. And allow me to say that this pope was straight up sloppy. Case in point, at the time of his appointment, Pope Formosus was actually still Bishop of Porto, Italy, and holding two such positions was illegal. So there, see? Already a bit of a naughty Pope. Lucky for him, nobody seemed to care. Around 892, a year into his papacy, Formosus was being pressured by the Emperor of Rome, Guido of the Spoleto family, to crown his son Lambert as the co-ruler. Formosus was not having it. But when Guido died a few years later, his son presumably expected to be named emperor and enjoy his time in the sun. Formosus, however, appointed Arnulf, king of the Franks. Upset, Lambert didn't like that one bit. And the Spoleto family sought to exact their revenge. But before they could, Pope Formosus died of natural causes in April of 896. And if you think that's the end of his story, oh, then you don't know nothing about popes. So he's dead? Yeah. I'm seeing a, a significant energy drop from fucking <laughs> Sex Party <laughs> McGee back there. We were, we were talking about people this is... fucking splooging on each other's chest so... while eating chestnuts. And then we get to this guy and you're like, ooh, he broke a rule. The this third... is a big, big rule to break, though. Wait, did we really build up to this? Oh, there's more. Oh. <laughs> Pope Boniface VI succeeded Formosus, and he died 15 days into his papacy. He got the gout! Next Pope! After the passing of Boniface VI, the Spoleto family used their influence to elect Stephen VI to the papacy, and it turns out that Stephen VI was allegedly just as guilty as Formosus when it came to the whole ruling over two dioceses at once thing, because he'd held two overlapping bishop positions in his past. Unbelievable. Him too. Wow. Is this juicy? It's fucked up for sure. Thank you. You mean to say he had two jobs at once? Yeah. He took too much work. That's bad. He needs some He's a time workaholic. Off. Well, don't make it sound commendable. Ten. No, no, just you <laughs> wait. Now, Stephen could get into trouble for that, but he could also most likely prevent any charges being thrown his way if he gained the favor of the powerful Spoleto family. And remember, the Spoletos were not big fans of the late Pope Formosus and had been planning their revenge on him when he went and spoiled their fun by, uh, dying. So, by one account, Pope Stephen VI and Lambert of the Spoletos conspired to bring disgrace to the deceased Formosus and have all his acts annulled. 
What they decided to do was put him on trial for that whole messy bishop thing that nobody seemed to mind when he was alive. They th put... I wrote the story sucks. I see. If you're asking, how exactly do you put a dead guy on trial? Well, the answer, apparently, is that you put a dead guy on trial. They dug up the dead pope's decaying body, dressed him in priestly attire, and placed him on the venerable seat of Roman pontiffs. Are you yashing me? <laughs> no. He had been decaying for nine months. Uh, <laughs> they took out his body. The way that this whole trial played out is kind of insane, but maybe everyone was too distracted by the rotting corpse to care. Keep in mind, he'd been dead for nine months at this point, so he probably didn't look <laughs> swell. The panel of judges was heavily biased, consisting of bishops who were either in Stephen's favor or too meek to oppose him. What would happen if they said no? That's what I'm saying, it's a big balls move. Like, he's bringing out a dead guy's body, so they're like, oh, I'm not gonna fuck with this guy. Big chestnuts on this guy. Big chestnuts. During the trial, Stephen would work himself up into fits of rage, screaming at the lifeless corpse and mocking its silence. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Mocking his silence? Yeah. This was a this must have been a hot ticket. Meanwhile, a teenage deacon was tasked with responding on the corpse's behalf, which seems stressful. <laughs> which, <laughs> he goes like this, you know, when he whispers to his ear. It's like, oh, so what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> In the end, to no one's surprise, Formosus was found guilty of perjury and breaking canon law. The corpse was stripped of its vestments, three of its fingers were cut off, and according to one source, it was dumped into a common grave. Then it is said that Stephen ordered the corpse to be dug up again and thrown into the Tiber River. Though, as the story goes, it was later fished out of the river and reburied uh, again. Leave this poor Pope alone. He's just trying to be dead. I just imagine the guy who was tasked with being the voice of this dead man if he kept doing it as they were cutting his fingers off. Like, <laughs> oh, my fucking fingers! Oh, yeah. shit! No, don't oh, throw me off the no. bridge! <laughs> Following this whole ordeal, the public, shockingly, began to think that Pope Stephen uh, wasn't so great. And even the Spoletos distanced themselves from him. And that was a good move on their part, because Pope Stephen was eventually captured by a mob, thrown in prison, and... Strangle. I'd like to see what this pope looks like. I'm you want to bring out this pope? All right, let's bring him out. Stephen the Sixth. Oh, okay. Oh, this guy. That's an interesting look. Yeah. You, sir, you have a lot of explaining to do. Mm, like about what exactly? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you hate that guy so much? Uh, dumb reasons mostly. You know, he he did some things this way. Oh, well, you know, I do things this way. A lot of people are like, well, you know, we really like the way, oh, you like the way, you know, a lot of that. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. <laughs> right, right. You know, after this whole crazy trial, you did it. You got him dead to rights. Right. Yeah. Dead, dead to rights. I am with you, man. <laughs> How does it feel when suddenly the public turns their back on you? I was surprised. I felt stupid. I should have listened to a lot of other people who tried to stop me, who tried to tell me the right thing to do. Wait, you mean there was people that were like, hey, maybe you shouldn't have put a dead body on trial? Only close, close confidants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, well, let's, let's rate this pope. I'm going to give you a nine. Oof. Allow me to explain. Digging the dead body, fine. Yeah. You're okay with that, too. I was like oh. a, like a six right there. I was oh, like, oh, really? Whatever. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Not bad. Did you have to cut his fingers? That's, that's where that's I get three up. points? That's fucked up. Okay. One for each finger. One for yeah. each finger. Well, you had to know when you were doing it that it was not, that's not a normal thing to do. Yeah, yeah. but he's, I thought he was already dead. Like, you ain't gonna feel it. Like, what's a... <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're, yeah, well, hey, an eight. You're eight. Okay, so Thank you. An eight. I'm actually just gonna give you a three. Oh, oh shit! Oh. I'll, say, I'll tell this why. You know what? I, I think you're a showman. You're a thespian. And I admire the theatricality of it all. So he's like the P.T. Barnum of popes. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. I can relate. Thank yeah. you. Ryan, uh, what do you give this pope? I'm gonna give him a seven. And why is that? I think we've all been in a bit that went on a little too long. My turn? Sarah. I said <laughs> 100. <laughs> 100? <laughs> so nasty. Sarah's not a fan. No. Wait, why? That's, that's, because that's higher than a ten. Dug up no. a dead body. So. So there's no one in history you would dig up. No dead person's dead. De you wouldn't dig them up, and you do understand not everybody has a 
a primal urge to dig up a dead mm. body and yell at it, right? No, that I can't <laughs> relate to. Okay. That part is... Um... All right, well, that's been our tour of popes. Is it illuminating to find out that popes are a little bit more human? It is interesting to see these men in power. It makes me wonder what the types of things my abbot at the monastery was up to. Mm. Shit. Oh, shit. You know, it was a long time ago. I feel like everybody was fucked up back then, so I don't hold the Catholic Church accountable for this. Not this, other things I do. Other things you do. <laughs> We've all messed up, and even a pope who you think is infallible They've messed up too, so be easy on yourself. When? Oh, when? Or what? When have, we, when have we messed up? You dug know. up a dead body. Mmm, <laughs> but that was a joke. And that's been the Pope episode. I don't know why I waited until now to call it the Pope episode. That's got a good ring to it. I should have been calling it that left and right. The Pope episode. Well, uh, I've had fun here. A lot, lot of juicy Pope content for you there. Hope you enjoyed it. Pope you enjoyed it. That's stupid. That's been Ruining History. Thanks for learning with us. 